Okay, I wanted to throw together a quick video to talk about sinkholes, uh, kind of what causes them, how to fix them, and how to prevent them in the future. On this batch here, I used wooden wicks inside of IGI 6006, which is a paraffin soy blend. And you can see that every single candle had a sinkhole around the wooden wick. In this next section, you can see I slowed it down a little bit to do a uh, time lapse so you can see exactly how it happens. Basically, the wax cools very fast, uh, and what it doesn't have to stick to, it eventually sinks down and settles around that. So you can see it's sticking to the wooden wick and sticking to the glass and everywhere else it starts to settle around the wooden wick which creates that hole or the cavity. There are a few different ways that you can prevent sinkholes from happening. One of them is you can heat the jars so that when the wax contracts and settles uh, it slides down the jar uh, along with everything else. Another way to prevent this is to pour at a much lower temperature. Wait for the wax to get all the way down to 135 to 125 and then pour it in there. That way it gives the candle less time to settle. You can see right there, the heat gun is my personal preference. I think it's the quickest method. So I grab the heat gun, heat up the top of the candle, and as it starts to melt, I grab the chopstick and just poke a hole in the top of that just to make sure that the wax gets down into that cavity. It opens it up a little bit more. Uh, and sometimes you may not realize there's a sinkhole, but there is one. So I always like to test it out and poke around at the top. So as the candle starts to heat up, it'll create a pool and actually funnel down into that. It goes pretty quick, so I usually try to line them all up and just kind of go through them uh, just as I take them. I uh, go through each one, I make a hole in the top of it uh, just to make sure that the uh, cavity opens up. You don't need to move it around, I was just showing that for demonstration purposes. The pool will create itself and then just funnel right down in there. And as you go through, as soon as you see the hole fill up and the candle gets level all the way across the top, just keep moving on. Now this candle here is a perfect example of why I have the chopstick. You can see right there, it almost doesn't look like there's a sinkhole, but once you poke it, it just falls right down in there. And I've had candles where you really couldn't tell that there was a sinkhole, but there was a huge one in there. So I always like to poke that in there just to make sure and fill it. Yeah, you don't want a customer finding that out the hard way. Another reason I always use the chopstick and poke through the top of the candle is to make sure there's no air pockets blocking the wax from getting in there. If you have a small hole, sometimes the air pockets will keep the wax from going in. So if you just poke it a couple times, it'll open it up and you'll make sure to get the cavity. Now, once I go through with the heat gun and heat every single candle, I like to go through one last time and heat them up just for a couple seconds. You can see there's a little bit of a divot in each one of those. If you go through with the heat gun and heat that up for maybe about another five or 10 seconds, you'll fill that in and you'll end up with a really nice smooth top like that. Okay, thanks for watching the video. I hope that was informative to some of the people that have been asking questions lately. If you have any suggestions, please send them my way. I'd love to do more videos and show you a little bit more of the process.